All right, you guys have been asking for some Galaxy content. Well, today you're going to get some Galaxy content. We're going to do some stuff to this uh, beautiful 64 here. I know it's not Legacy. Some of y'all have been asking about Legacy. When we get to parts, we'll get back to work on it. But there's a, little, there's a couple of little things we got to do to this beautiful red 64 here so that we can go out and make some track passes before the end of the year. Y'all hang in there. I'm going to tell you exactly what those are. I'd say he's a nut job. <laughs> All right, so I've got it outside today. Got it on the ramp truck mainly because I like working outside. But uh, the ramp truck is perfect because we're going to be working on a fuel pump right here. And this is just perfect for me to sit on a little stool right here, reach right up over my head, and work on the fuel pump. It's actually mounted right here. Uh, on this particular car, the fuel pump has a little bit of leaking issue to it, and that's to be expected when one sits a little while. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. What we've got is an old Barry Grant 280 uh, fuel pump here. Got it disconnected on this side. And uh, this fuel pump leaks, and it's hard to tell where it's coming from because it just gets all wet in this area. So part of me think it thinks it's coming from the, the plug here, but some of me also thinks it's coming from, uh, I, you know, I don't know. I'm not even going to guess. But these fuel pumps are rebuildable. Now, they sell kits to rebuild uh, electric fuel pumps if you, get a, if you get a good one. If you get some cheap pump, maybe not but uh these are rebuildable now basically what they do is they come with some o-rings that go in these different spots here and after sitting for a while or not getting used these o-rings kind of dry up a little bit and shrink and then they don't want to swell back up when you start using them so they leak now you can get rebuild kits now the downside of this is they don't make this pump anymore and I have scoured the internet and I have not found an actual rebuild kit for this. Now, I'm sure out there somewhere there may be one, but I have not found one yet. And we'd like to get out there and make some passes. So I have a fix for this to get us back on the track. Now, I will say before I just discard it, we are going to dive into it and see if we can find a pinched O-ring or an O-ring that we can tell is bad. And that way, maybe we can just repair what's there with, you know, an O-ring for some other kit, basically is what I'm saying. We can find one the same size. But I've already bought another fuel pump that I could technically use on a different vehicle. But that's our backup. So we're going to see what we can do about this one first. All right. We got it off here on the workbench slash uh, hood because, well, this is just a work truck. That's what it's made for. So let's pull these fittings out of the ends, take a look at them, and see if we see an O-ring that is just garbage here, and see what we see. Maybe something we can easily straighten out. And you see what I'm talking about here, how they have little O-rings right here? I'll try to zoom in. These little O-rings, these things get dried out. This one right here is kind of dry itself, and they'll leak. Let's get both sides off. Yeah, these do look kind of pitiful. All right, and I'm also going to pull this plug out right here. I believe there's an O-ring behind this one, too. My original theory was right here is where it was leaking, but we're going we're gonna to test this. I believe that I can go to the parts store and pick up some generic O-rings. Yeah, you can see, if you look real close, you can see that right there is flat. 
there's no o-ring to that anymore so i believe i can get some of these at the parts store i'm gonna pull this brass plug out right here and take a look at it as well and i may before i put a new fuel pump on it attempt to i'm going to attempt to put o-rings in this and see if that stops the leaking also uh, I got to looking at it and this had been hard wired in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a weather pack connector on this so it's a plug. So you can plug it and unplug it. And that way if the fuel pump is ever an issue, it's as simple as unplugging this, putting the weather pack connector on a new fuel pump, plugging it up. And it will make it more serviceable for doing stuff like this is if you can just plug and unplug it. So we're going to go ahead and do that too. I think that'll be a, a, a good um advantage there so let's get this plug right here out check out what o-rings in it and then we're going to put some new o-rings in this thing uh, i honestly think it's leaking from here but when this is all wet and dripping with the gas it's hard to tell it could be coming from here it could be coming from here uh it, it's it's hard to tell where it's coming from so i'm gonna go ahead and replace all the o-rings okay we may have found the culprit we took this out and this o-ring it might be hard to see on video this o-ring right here is almost non-existent anymore it's pretty much crushed flat and it's pretty stiff so we're going to say this is probably our culprit now what i'm going to do is i cannot get these o-rings today uh my local parts store uh is pretty much closed i mean they're open but they'll have one teenage kid behind the counter that would look at you like you got nine heads if you go in there today so I'm going to wait till tomorrow and we're going to go into the local parts store and we're going to see if we can get some O-rings. That right there looks like it may be about the size of an ejector O-ring or something, but I don't know that for sure. We'll have to get it off and compare it. Uh, and then we'll look and see what we can do about these. I'm sure my normal parts guy will have an idea of some of these and we're going to replace these O-rings and see if we can put this few and put a weather pack connector on this pump. Uh, and we're going to see if we can make this pump work before we change it because at the end of the day these old Barry Grant pumps uh, These are amazing pumps and they work Just absolutely excellent. So if we can make this pump uh, Not leak then we're going to keep this pump on this car. All right. We stepped inside to my little cluttered workbench uh, I had no joy on uh, Finding these o-rings right here Now They're out there and uh, I will do some research and try to find the correct O-rings to rebuild this. But in the meantime, so we can get passes done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a quick connect on this uh, and uh, on the other side. And I'm going to put a quick connect on my plan B here so that when I do find the correct O-rings, it's as simple as unplugging this and plugging the new one back, or plugging this one back up. It, it'll be real simple. Uh, so we're setting ourselves up for the future really is what we're doing because I know these O-rings are out there I just have to find them. So what we're going to do right now is Like anybody I had a plan B because I figured these was going to be difficult So for this application my plan B I, I ran this fuel pump on about everything uh, So I know it's a quality pump as far as it will feed the engine uh, I run this on the white galaxy with no issues so I know it'll feed it I know it'll feed more engine than what's in in that one so we're gonna get this one out and then I'm gonna show you uh, what we're gonna have to do to make this one work with how we're set up now, now this is kind of what modern if you if you're not familiar with all this at all this is kind of what a modern uh, electric fuel pump looks like it's made more in this style than this one by dimensions it's much smaller but these things do pump uh a good bit of fuel this one right here is rated at 14 psi that one of course was probably rated for more i don't know exactly what that one's rated for but at the end of the day you got a regulator up on the carburetor or up near the carburetor and you're regulating it down to about seven pounds of pressure anyway so this is plenty of fuel pump for the job. Now, 
we got to make a couple of changes. Uh, and I'm going to show you the difference and the changes that we got to make to make this work out. All right, so right here you can see side by side the, the comparison as far as the actual volume of the size. This has a much bigger motor on it than this does. This is a much smaller motor. Um, but really that's the biggest difference is the motor size. Now, this is an older one. And by doing research, we can tell this is a little bit of the older, older ones because of the size of the inlet. Uh, they made a standard change at some point and went to a 3.8 size inlet. And that's become standard across the board now. And the older stuff ran a half inch. Well, we've got these connectors here. And that's what's been done here. This is for the half inch down to the 3 8. So we're lucky enough we already have a 3 8 fitting. So what we're going to do is take this off. I already loosened it up. I'm not that strong. We're going to take this off and fit this directly into here. Now, these are very unique connectors. Uh, before anybody chimes in and says this is an airline connector, it's not. This is made for fuel. This is made by a company called Jiffy Tight, I believe is the, the name of the company. And uh, these things are freaking amazing. They're quick connects for all your fuel system. They make them for the carburetors, the fuel pumps, fuel cells. They make them in different sizes so you can connect any of your plumbing to it. And then it's pretty much like an A-in line with a thing that looks similar to an air, ch uh, air uh, fitting on the end that clips on and off. So you can easily remove stuff without having to fool with clamps and um, cutting lines or anything like that. It's all just pre-made. It's, it's really, really uh, a slick, uh, a slick setup. And we're going to put these back on there because this car has already had the jiffy tight lines run under it. So we're going to keep that for our quick connect purposes. These are just, you can see them. They're just open. Uh, and again, they are made for fuel systems. It's the first time I've had any dealings with them, but I'm, I'm kind of impressed by them. Uh, we'll see. I don't know any real details about them. Like I said, it's the first time I've used them, but they seem to be pretty slick. So we're going to take these, and then we're going to insert these, insert these into the sides of the new fuel pump so that the new one will accept our jiffy tight lines. Like so, we're going to run those in on each side, and then we'll have our connections. We'll be able. We'll have to drill two new holes in the the plate under there for these mountain brackets because they mount in a different location. Now, the car is already set up with a piece of flat steel mounted to the frame and drops down. So it's really simple. We're just going to, have to put two new holes in that piece of flat steel and mount these. And then we have this fuel pump here. We'll have a quick connect on the end of this, a quick connect on the end of that, and on the end of the line under there. So we can run this one, make test passes on the car, get things figured out, and then when I find the proper rebuild kit, we can go back to the to the big fuel pump on it, and we should be fine. We should be fine with this fuel pump. I just know that that was the one that was on it, and I would like to rebuild the one that was on it, and do a video showing y'all how to go through and rebuild these. And then we end up like this. Got our quick connects on both sides. I've just got to run and get a new uh, plug. And then this will be ready to test fit on the car. See what we need to mount it up and down wise to get the lines in the right area where they need to be. And uh, yeah, we'll be ready to take the car and make some test passes in it right after uh, the street and eat, drag and drive. Now we have a fuel pump that's ready to go on there. Um, unfortunately, it looks like it's gonna rain and I decided I wanted to work outside. So I need to get the car tucked away and out of the weather and we'll see how we can do with that. Well, there it is. For something that was supposed to be a quick, easy job, that turned into way more work than it's supposed to be. I still got to put my uh, weather pack connector on there and my plug, but it's pretty close to being ready now. Um, you can see 
the original bolt holes were here. I had to raise it up a little bit because this is not quite as wide. Therefore, the lines were not quite as long, but by moving them up, it gave me plenty of room. There's even a little slack in them, which is what you want. You don't want them banjo string tight, you know what I mean? So now I just gotta put my connector on here, put my plug in it, and we can fire this thing up and let it run. All right, as you can see, it's under a tarp now. This is why a job that's supposed to be five minutes ends up taking all day. I put the car on the ramp truck, have it sitting outside because it's a beautiful day here in South Carolina. It's maybe 70 at the hottest, probably upper 60s. Sun shining, gorgeous day. I like to work outside when it's pretty. Put it on the ramp truck, plus the height for the back of the ramp truck made it so I could just sit on my little fat butt and work right there. Everything was perfect. I get the old pump off, it starts to rain. So my wife comes out here and helps me when we tarp this car down because this car can't get wet. So we cover the car real good, bundle up like a loaf of bread in here and just, we got her tightened down and weather tight, boom, we're ready to go. Literally walk in the house, the sun's back out. Welcome to the weather in South Carolina. So anyway, we've got the fuel pump on now, as you've seen. Got the lines connected. I just gotta put my weather pack connector on, plug it in, and then we can fire this thing up, test everything, and let it run for a minute, make sure there's no leaks. I may have to snug those lines just a little tighter. I don't know till I try. But I'm gonna have to uncover it and do all that. So, hang in there, it's gonna take me a minute, It'll be like a half a second for you, but Hang in there, we're gonna get the cover off this. We're gonna put our connectors on it. And then we're going to uh, fire up and see what uh, see what it runs like. All right, I got the connector on the back. I think I may have tightened up the fitting on the back side of that fuel pump, but we'll know in just a minute. Turn the power on. We'll know in just a minute, because I think uh, if it leaks, I think that's where it's going to leak at. Um, I'm too fat for this. All right. I don't think I need all the way in the car. I think I just need to be able to turn the fuel pump on. Let me give it just a second to run and I'll be able to look and see. All right. Oh, let me hop down like I'm 18 again. Everything looks okay. Everything looks okay. Let's, uh, I keep forgetting this thing's got a cage in it. I don't know how I forget it. I'm looking right at it. Uh, Man, too old and fat for this.
Well, there you go. That's a short video for you. And this video is really just a setup video for one that's going to come in a couple of weeks where we take this car to the track. And uh, we're going to get it to the track. We're going to make a couple of uh, 60 foot pulls. And then we're going to make a couple full track pulls. We'll probably do a couple of 60 foot pulls, shake down, make sure everything's good. There's no weirdness in it. Uh, and then we'll come back and do a uh, foot brake launched car and send it and make sure everything's still good. If we do all those and everything is still kosher and works like it's supposed to, next time we pull up, we'll hit the trans brake, put some RPM to it, and we're going to launch it and we're going to see what it's got. We're going to send it down the track. But I want to work our way into it. So now we have everything out of the way mechanically that needs to be done to this car, which wasn't much. Just a leaky fuel pump and an oil change is all we really need to do. And now it's all about getting some heat back in it and getting it back out of the track. That will come not in the next video. You see, the next video you see is going to be our drag and drive that we're doing. Uh, we're leaving for this week. We're actually leaving for it on Wednesday. So that'll be the next video you, come, you see. When we come back, we are taking this thing to Shady Side, and we're going to run it through its paces at Shady Side and see what it see what it does. All that you'll get to see. You'll get to see the passes. You'll get to see the tweaking. You'll get to see if there's any issues. You'll see it all right here. So hopefully, y'all are into this galaxy and uh, into seeing the 64 make some passes because that's coming extremely soon. Now that I've got all that out of the way. Uh, keep in mind, the next things you see will be the Dragon Drive event, the Street and Yeet, the Southeast Street and Yeet. We'll be running in the stick shift class. You've seen all the debacles of us trying to get ready for that. We will be in the street, the stick shift class for that um, and seeing what we can do. Um, I'll bring you as much of that and as much of the racing in, in that as I can. The much of the shenanigans, whatever we get into, you'll see it. Uh, also, don't forget to check out our friends at Greasy's Garage for that soap. I mean, you're already buying soaps to wash your hands with if you're a mechanic or anybody that works outdoor, a farmer, what have you. Uh, that stuff really, really works, and I'll put a link into that. Also, I have set up a, I believe the name of the company is Fourth Wall. Um, where you can buy all kinds of merchandise. I actually don't have anything to do with the making of this stuff or anything. I don't know what it, um, I don't know anything about the merchandise, to be honest about it. Just putting that out there. Uh, this is an outside company that is, makes them to order. So as you order them, they make them and send them to you. There's a lot of stuff on that. I will put in a link to that. Eventually, it'll start showing up in my videos, I think. So I'll put a link into that. Um, what else can we cover? Uh, I also have a idea for a race that I want to do next year that I want to promote and put on next year. So stay tuned for details of that. Uh, and of course, remember, please, please hit that thumbs up button and drop a comment. I don't care if you just say hello and where you're from. Drop a comment, please. Uh, just comment on the video if you watch it and let us know you watched it. That's all. I mean, it gets... It helps promote our videos out there, and the more people that watch, the better it is for us. So, I think I've covered all the bases here. Uh, man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate each and every one of you subscribers. You allow us to make content like this, and we don't forget that. Uh, I've heard you. You want to see more of the galaxies? I've heard you, and you will get to see more of the galaxies. But keep in mind, there's like 25 vehicles around here. I have to work some of them in. I just have to. So... Uh, God bless you. I hope the Lord bless you more today than he did yesterday. To him be all the glory. Um, and uh, guys, I, I don't know what else to say. We'll see you on the next one. I got to get ready for street and eat. Uh, Lord willing, and uh, we're able to use this car. I've got something in mind next year for this car that we want to do that I've never done before, but I need this car to be consistent to make that work. So we're going to make a few passes in it. And I hope y'all enjoy those. Hey guys, I'm rambling. We'll see you on the next one. Until then, guys, just remember to keep the shiny side up. Uh, God bless y'all. Him be the glory. And 
uh, I'm out. I got to get ready for street and eat. <laughs> I'd say he's a nut job. <laughs>